Radio, and this is episode 12. We have a very special guest today. We have Sang Choi, and she is the head pharmacist at Etain at the dispensary in New York, the only actually women owned dispensary in New York. And I'm really, really so excited to have her um, with us today because we're going to talk about something that we really want and appreciate her expertise on, which is drug testing. Um, the reason why we pursued this particular topic was that we get so many clients coming into um, Artemis asking if they're taking CBD, whether they'll fail a drug test or not. So having an expert like saying here today, we can go over the whole gamut of it. With that being said, let's start off with talking about the legality of THC and CBD. Okay. Uh, so CBD is legal now, uh, federally, because of the passing of the 2018 Farm Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, THC on the federal level is still illegal. Right. Right. Only uh, legal in uh, medical states, as yeah. long as you have a card. So let's talk about the perspective of New York. So New York is medically legal, yes. but not rec legal. Right. So for you to get access to THC, you would need a medical card to do that. Right. But in states like California, it is completely open. So rec and medical now, right? right? Um, so given that, if your employer asks for you to take a drug test, right, um, yeah. is that going to, how does the legality affect that? Um, that's a good question. It's actually pretty complicated at this point. Um, so we know that CBD is legal. Right. So we're, you know, drug tests are not testing for CBD. Uh, drug tests are testing for THC and its metabolites. Right. Um, so now the problem is that every employer can set their own rules as to what kind of policies that they have. So because THC is illegal on the federal level, you know, we run into that problem where there is the Controlled Substance Act, which makes uh, THC a class one uh, substance. So we don't know if federal law trumps mm -hmm. state laws, mm -hmm. and that's a complication. You know, we question our patients taking uh, THC, CBD products. Are they, you know, protected under the Americans with Disability Act? Mm. So every employer basically makes up their own sort of uh, rules as to drug testing. Mm -hmm. Now, if a company is getting uh, federal grant money, mm -hmm. then they could have a zero tolerance policy. Right, right, which means that they don't accept any type of traces right. um, of THD metabolites in, in right. the test showing at all. Right. right? So um, we'll talk more about the test in a little bit, but let's actually talk about what you are taking that affects these tests, right? So in the CBD market, um, you have a, a selection of isolate products, broad spectrum products, and full spectrum products. Mm -hmm. So in an isolate product, you are technically, um, there's only CBD showing in the product, no other compounds, right. right? So if you are taking an isolate, would you say that that is the most safest bet to being able to pass a drug test if they're testing for TH or marijuana metabolites? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be impossible uh, to test for THC with the CBD isolate because it's just CBD. Okay, so other than an isolate, let's talk about broad spectrum. So right now the market, broad spectrum is classified as having uh, all of the other cannabinoids but THC. Mm -hmm. So if the test is testing for marijuana metabolites mm -hmm. and if you're taking a broad spectrum product without THC, can you potentially you know, not pass a drug test. Yeah, it's possible uh, because uh, there's a cannabinoid called CBN mm -hmm. in there, and CBN is a derivative of THC. So you could probably get a false positive test. So technically, even if you're not taking one with THC, and if it's a broad spectrum with CBN in it, you can still basically not pass a test because it shows up at the same as a THC on the test. Right, and the, but the doses that you take have to be pretty high. Got it, got so. it, got it. And can you give us some perspective of how high that dose might I be? I mean, I saw an example of 2,000 milligrams of CBD or broad spectrum, but yeah. I don't know how feasible that actually is. Right, right, right. Okay, we're gonna touch on that in a little bit, but let's continue with the range of products that's out there in the market right now. So now the last part is a full spectrum product, mm -hmm. right? So full spectrum CBD products consist of the whole plant, including 
under 0.3% dry weight mm -hmm. of THC. Mm -hmm. um, so if a client or if a, a patient um, takes a full spectrum product, how would that work? Again, it's possible to test for THC and its metabolites because that is what the drug test is actually testing for. Mm -hmm. So again, it has to be um, a very high dose that a person takes to be able to test for that. Okay. But you know, one of the issues that we run into is the fact that we don't have standardized dosing or products. So there was um, an article that was published in November 2017 um, in the Journal of American Medical Association. Mm -hmm. So this uh, test actually took 84 products, 84 products that were tested, uh, made by different companies. Mm -hmm. And it was pro tested for uh, tinctures, oils, uh, vaporizers, mm -hmm. all different things. So it turns out 43% were underlabeled, 26% were overlabeled, and 31% were accurately labeled. Mm -hmm. And the interesting fact is that 18 out of these 84 products actually tested for uh, a THC content. Higher than the 0.3? Yes. So with, with this 0.3 threshold, um, and someone's taking it for long term, like, when is the amount of time that it needs to show up positive on a drug test? Like, for example, if I took a tincture today and I go get my drug test, am I going to fail this drug test? So it takes about um, seven days for it to clear out your system. I would say between seven to ten days. So now if you use it on a regular basis, because it does get stored in our fat, our fat cells, um, it could take about 60 days to really come out of the system. So you said, what, two months? Yeah. So if, for me, I've been using CBD for the last eight months. Yeah. Consistently, twice a day for my own pelvic issues mm -hmm. and for my own mood and everything else, too. And I, I, I would use more of it during my PMS days mm -hmm. to help with the pain. And this has been consistent for, for eight months now. Mm -hmm. Potentially, if I took a drug test, I potentially would probably... Put, no. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. So I, I think, you know what, a part of me, I feel like I see this on Instagram and I see this on, you know, even blog posts and people writing about it. Um, usually the first thing they say is that when you take a CBD product, you will not have to worry about testing positive on a drug test. Yeah. And for, for what we're talking about, there is gray lines, right? There's a yeah. gray area that technically Absolutely. you can potentially test positive. And the biggest differentiator is knowing if this product is an isolate, mm -hmm. a broad spectrum, because broad spectrum with a little bit of CBN uh, would still translate to the metabolite, the marijuana metabolite, if you have it in a drug test. Right. Um, and a full spectrum product, which has all the cannabinoids with the THC, can potentially show up. Right. And you just mentioned, too, that all of this gets stored in our in our fat cells, right. right? And women have a different storage system than men do. Sure. So would you, would that be another factor that we have to consider? Absolutely, I mean, women have a, fi uh, a higher fat content in the body. Also has to do with metabolism. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a couple of different factors and it's a, a little bit of a gray area because we don't really know how fast someone will in eliminate it out of their bodies. Right, right. So, yeah, it's definitely so slower for women. Right, right. Uh, metabolism's a big factor. Age is a factor. The older you get, the slower your metabolism is. Yeah. So there's a lot of different factors that we have to look at, I think. Right, right, right. Uh, and then, so let's talk about the actual test, yeah. right? Um, when I was, I, I did some research before this and I saw that Quest uh, Diagnostic and other labs too available across the nation uh, can test for Basically, they, they label it as under marijuana metabolites, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what I saw was that the threshold was about 50 nanograms mm -hmm. right, per milliliter. Can you put us to, to some ex perspective of what 50 nanograms look like? Well, that's a really difficult question mm -hmm. um, because I think it has to do with how much you use, how long you've used it. And it could be that you used it five days ago and show up in the blood or mm -hmm. actually the urine as you know, 50 nanograms. Um, you could have used it for eight months and still show up as 50 nanograms. Um, so I think for drug testing, it really has to do with your employer. Wow, so, and if, you have, if your employer has a zero tolerance policy, it, it can just be zero nanograms. It could be 10 and right. you know, 
they might not hire you. So I think this is why this conversation is so important, yeah. right? That if you are looking for a job that potentially they're gonna drug test you, right. um, we wanna make sure that you're safe and that you're right. well equipped and that you have all the knowledge that you need um, when it comes to actually taking CBD in your daily life, right? Um, so given that too, with, I think what worries me too is what you cited for the, the JAMA uh, study with all the products testing high, low, or you know, none at all in products. So the USDA last week um, posted formal guidelines on how hemp can be grown, harvested, tested, processed, transported, and sold. Mm -hmm. um, also it allows for like interstate commerce. Oh wow. Yeah, because of the fact that it's not um, you know, federally legal. So it allows for that. And what the great part of that is a testing. Mm -hmm. So then maybe we wouldn't have these problems as far as um, testing positive for THC and its metabolites. Because mm. there would be more standardization. Uh, the test would be sensitive enough to make sure that there are no, there's no THC contained in the product. Right, right. Or if there, but I mean, with a full spectrum product, you still want a little bit of that THC in there. Again, under 0.3%. Yeah. Um, so, well, it's not just the farm bill. It's the fact that hemp is just classified as, you know, CBD plant that has less than 0.3%. It's a cannabis plant that right, just right, has right. less than 0.3% THC. Right. Um, so with this regulation, I think our hope is that there will be more standardized testing when it comes to the, actually yeah. the product itself. Yeah. So the products are not testing too high right. um, or over the 0.3% threshold. And then the products that you are taking has the optimal effects for your body right. at not at a lower threshold than that in that right. sense. So what would the... What would your advice be for someone who is worried about taking a drug test and not passing um, and still wants to use CBD for whatever reason that, that they need it for, for pain treatments, for um, their own mental health, or whatever it is that they're looking to treat? Yeah, I mean, things, I think it's really important to go to a reputable CBD source, number one. Um, you should have a certificate of analysis to show really the breakdown of the product. Mm. Um, but just to be cautious, I would give it two months. If you have been using it on a daily basis for a while, I would give it at least 60 days just so that it doesn't you know, preclude you from not getting this job because the companies themselves and the employers themselves might have their own you know, rules on how they handle drug testing right. and finding THC and its metabolites. Right, right. So I think the, I think the end message is, you know, to be safe, just don't take it for two months. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the aside question is, is it okay to take an isolate then? So for example, if someone's taking a full spectrum product and needs it, and um, for whatever reason cannot stop taking it for two months, can they substitute those two months' time with an isolate product versus a full spectrum product just to make sure that they don't show positive? Yeah, so um, Quest Diagnostics um, has said that it's going to be very, very difficult to find THC or its metabolites in a CBD isolate product. It'd be very surprising to you know, find that. Okay, so that can be an option for, for if, you, if you're listening, that can be an option for you if you want to venture down that road, is to take an ice slip for the, for the two months or the three months worth of time that you want to make sure that you don't test positive at all in a drug test for this. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are taking a full spectrum product, um, just be mindful, right? Yeah. That potentially it can show um, and, you know, our hope is that there's more standardized testing, so whatever products you do buy in the market will be accurate, so then you're not testing too hot for THC. Yeah. Um, and, it, and I think that the, the, the bigger picture is that you know, it really depends on the person, right? So it depends on your weight, it depends on your metabolism level, your age, and how fast you process and your body processing this metabolite when you're testing too, right. you know? Um, but I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions at all for, uh, for Sang, please let us know, and we can deep dive into just the, the topic of drug testing when it comes to CBD products. Well, thank you so much for being here, Sang. Thank and you so much. we will see you in the next episode. Thank you.